See how things are looking in here. No matter what comes your way, I will stay right here beside you to catch you if you fall. And deep and abiding, liking for you is all I need until my heart gives in. Well, overall things are looking pretty good in here. Uh, we do have some sun scald, so we ordered the shade cloth to go over the entire tunnel. Uh, that'll help out quite a bit. Uh, the new growth, uh, you know, it recovers or it doesn't have the scald unless we have a really bad day. So overall things are still growing really well. Uh, you can see on the lower leaves where we had uh, some burn early on. Uh, now, to be honest, the shade cloth that's gonna be as much for us as it is for the plants because I think the plants will be okay. Um, you know, it may affect production a little bit. Uh, it could, could kind of slow down things a little bit, but as long as it doesn't kill it. Now, if it starts damaging fruit, once we have the fruit on there, that'll be a little more bothersome for us. But uh, for us, the comfort out here, we're gonna be out here a lot this summer and having that shade cloth make a drastic difference. It's a 50% cloth. We already have that over the little cattle panel greenhouse and the, the difference you can see in there and feel is just dramatic. Uh, so went ahead and ordered the shade cloth from Farmer's Friend to put over the, the caterpillar tunnel here and uh, it should be in soon and we'll get that pulled over and that'll make a, a big difference in here as far as the feel uh, but it'll also help prevent some of the sun scald uh, on everything. A little natural pest control there. So for those that aren't aware, the youngest one is raising leeks this year. Uh, it's her uh, little business venture. And uh, they're looking pretty good. The, uh, about 25 feet over here behind me, and then a little bit down at the end of the uh, lettuce, uh, and then another 25, 30 foot bed over here on the other side in the more perennial area. Uh, so her plan is to sell a bunch of those we'll keep a bunch for us to eat and then she'll sell a lot of the remaining uh, she started from seed the first time had issues with that they didn't take good so we did actually purchase some uh, plants for her and uh, she's got a little bit of weeding to do to get those cleaned up but overall they're looking pretty good so uh, we'll uh, move on to the next phase with uh, marketing pricing harvesting marketing uh, selling all that and uh, introduce her to those aspects. Well, we've started harvesting the iceberg lettuce and would you call this traditional uh, stereotypical iceberg lettuce? 
<laughs> so it doesn't look like the iceberg you get from the store and it doesn't taste like it either. It has a lot of flavor. It's much better. Yeah, much so, better. so we're gonna start harvesting this uh, pretty regular uh, as it starts to warm up here. We've got some heads forming and uh, try to stay on top of it. So none of it goes to waste. We're also planning on probably sharing some of it. Yeah. And, uh, and you see, we've got plenty. <laughs> that was the plan. Um, it's good stuff. Have a little salad lunch. Maybe put some leaves on the uh, sandwiches. Yeah. Um, had a salad, taco salad the other night. We've uh, used it a few different ways, so it's pretty good. Is it? Is it? Is it? It's much better than the iceberg lettuce <laughs> you usually. She didn't want me playing an iceberg because <laughs> yeah, she's like thinking the of the lettuces. 89 cent head at the store yeah. that is a you know three quarter pound blob of crunchy flavorless water. fiber. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Oh. <laughs> crunchy water. So it's not the same. It's uh, way better. Yeah, so it's much better. I'll be honest. I had no idea how that iceberg was going to turn out. So uh, pleasantly surprised and. Uh, I can say I told you so, but I had no idea. All right, depending on how much time I have later, I may bring the flame weeder out here and hit the uh, acorn squash area and the okra. Got a lot of little elm sprouts and uh, maple sprouts have popped up. Uh, so. May do it by hand, may use a flame weeder. Just depends on how much time we got and if we're already out here. Hopefully we're in for another banner elderberry year. All right, kohlrabi, 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 kohlrabi. Hey, wait a minute. You don't belong there. Well, I guess we have a very adventurous blackberry. One little shoot coming up about eight feet away from the plants, from the, the trellis. Everything out here in the food forest is looking good. Uh, the seed that we put in uh, is not sprouted just yet, but it's only been a few days, a couple days, three days, four days, something like that. But uh, everything else, sure looking good. All greened up, everything's growing. Got lots of fruit, berries expected. Comfrey's growing like crazy. Potatoes, uh, the two varieties we have uh, I guess we have three varieties because we kept some from last year. One's determinate, one's indeterminate. Uh, so we'll probably just uh, mound the indeterminate side. Mint's growing. We use that as ground cover under some things. I see blackberries forming, raspberries, honeyberries. Uh, we've got plums, pears, apples. Uh, the service berries start growing. Uh, boy, got you in the dark there. We did lose all of our pawpaw fruit. Uh, storm came through. We were hoping this would be the first year that we had pawpaws. These trees are only, I uh, got one right there and then one behind you. They're only uh, three years old. I think this will be the third year. So not expecting fruit yet, but they did flower good this year. I think we had some pollination, uh, but storm, like I said, came through and knocked a lot of that off. Uh, hazelnuts are growing good. A couple of those. We're letting uh, the asparagus go to frond this year. Almost uh, pretty much entirely we've harvested uh, just a, a few spears. Uh, we're actually talking about relocating it. Uh, I'm not big on the spot it's in. Uh, I think it'll flourish better somewhere else. So, don't be afraid to change things. Just because you do something one time or you think you, you got it right, it, if it doesn't pan out, uh, even though something like asparagus will lose quite a bit of time, uh, you know, getting it to flourish somewhere, you know, a lot uh, is worth more than, you know, just getting a little bit of piecemeal here and there. So we've got the tomatoes in. Uh, tomatoes and peppers in this area on the trellis. 
green beans are starting to pop. We've got some more tomatoes that need to go up. Still don't have the trellis over there. Uh, you saw in the video, if the fans didn't give it away, we had a water leak in the house pop up uh, on the day we were supposed to be building the other trellis. So since then, we've been dealing with uh, disaster restoration and insurance and everything else. Had a water line bust in the wall and flooded a couple rooms. Uh, so not the best way to wake up on a, week a weekend morning, but it's just a, you know, it's minor distraction. You know, it's, it's stuff. We can fix the walls. We fixed all the plumbing. Uh, we we're able to save the carpet and pad, which I guess expense wise, that's a good thing. Uh, but also thought about getting rid of carpet. Uh, just, I don't know. It seems like no matter how much you vacuum or clean, it's just never as clean as a good solid floor. But, oh well, another time. That's not, not something we're going to worry about right now. So uh, getting everything slowly put back together and we'll be back to normal in no time. Again, it's nothing, it's not the end of the world. It's just a little distraction and uh, we'll get that fixed up. So appreciate all the comments and thoughts concerned. Some of y'all noticed the events on social media, but uh, we're, we're good. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. We caught it pretty quick. So it was a little bit of an interruption to some other things though, but hey, all right. There's kind of update on how things are going out here. And uh, we got plenty to do, as always. But to all of you at the homestead, uh, you know that's how it goes. And uh, that's why we do it. We also enjoy it. Uh, we wouldn't take on more responsibility if we didn't enjoy doing it. Or if you do and don't enjoy it, uh, you might rethink uh, homesteading. <laughs> Meat birds are doing good. They're growing. Uh, I think we got about uh, uh, three, less than three weeks, uh, two and a half weeks till we harvest. So we'll have a freezer full or filled back up. It's just about depleted now. Fill the freezer back up. Uh, and uh, we've got the, the pullets. They're about ready to go in with the main flock. And uh, we did uh, gift uh, our big rooster and five hens to some friends that have been back and forth on getting chickens. Uh, they had some concerns about predators and things. And we've been talking to them for a while. and. Uh, I think it was really on them. They, they wanted chickens. Uh, they just kind of needed that little nudge. So they've got a good secure coop set up. It's tied right into garden space. They're going to be building soil for a while. Uh, and they're already getting, they were getting eggs the first day. Uh, so they're going to gather up, I think, a few more hens so that they've got a better ratio with that uh, pretty well matured rooster uh, rather than just five hens. But uh, so they're set up to go. And uh, we've We've uh, enjoyed watching them uh, really enjoy having chickens. So, all right. Well, I guess uh, we'll wrap it up here and uh, no projects working on right now, uh, but uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure something will pop up the next day or so and we'll be sure and try to include y'all on that. So uh, y'all get out there, plant something, uh, harvest something, share something, teach something. Let's just uh, let's keep it going. I think we've all got a lot of momentum in homesteading right now and uh, we need to take advantage of it make the most of it to try to grow this community even more. But we'll see y'all next time. Bye.